dietitian for a long time. Uh, I've been a dietitian for a long time and um, I try to be active in the state and local um, dietetic associations. I am not currently the president of the Academy of Nutrition Dietetics. That's a one year position, uh, but I am the House of Delegate elect for Ohio, which means I talk to our constituent members and move that on to our national association, which is um, fun to do and a lot of work. <laughs> um, but what I really love to do is share my nutrition knowledge um, of food and cooking and try to make it easy and delicious for people to eat. So the topic today with, you know, the weather getting cooler, it's kind of a nice time of year to start focusing more on soup and stew. And so this is one of my favorite recipes that's really simple to make, as long as you have all the ingredients with you. So anytime I do a cooking demonstration, and really anytime that you're at home and you want to make a recipe, just make sure you have everything before you get started. Um, part of my work is teaching high school, <laughs> high school students nutrition. And um, our, our rule is that they cannot start mixing until they have all the ingredients in front of them, but that doesn't always happen. So for the purposes of this demo and when you're at home, cooking is much easier if you've got everything kind of lined up and you know that you have the ingredients available. Um, that being said, I always suggest that you can substitute ingredients. So for example, I'm using a smoked um, chili powder or chili pepper. Um, you could also use smoked paprika. You could use regular paprika if you don't want it as spicy, or you could just simply use chili powder. That's fine too. Um, I like this because it just gives it a little bit of a different taste than you would normally have in a, in a chili or a stew. Um, I'm also going to be making a spinach, apple, and date salad. And I always like to combine some sort of leafy green because that's really great for cancer prevention. It's also great for eye health. There's also good data to suggest that eating leafy greens every day helps to reduce your risk of dementia. So I try to incorporate some type of leafy green. So today I'll be using some spinach in the salad and then some sort of seasonal fruit. So today I have pink lady apples. It's just what I had in my house, but you could use Honeycrisp. You could use Granny Smith apples. You could use pears if you like. And then I typically use some type of dried fruit. So either dried cherries, raisins, dried apricots. Today I've got dates, but to be honest, they are considered a fresh fruit. So even though people consider them to be dried, um, when they're you know, picked from the tree, they're actually wrinkled and they look more like a giant raisin. So those are actually fresh fruit. And then I've got a really simple vinaigrette with balsamic vinegar, canola oil, a little bit of honey and Dijon mustard, which gives it a little bit of a tangy taste and then also just gives it a little bit more texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of prepping some of the ingredients for the sweet potato stew. And we start with a little bit of canola oil and a small onion that's already been diced. <clears throat> and if you've been in my classes before, I will tell you that I will not cut onions in front of people uh, because they make me cry. So half of my eye makeup came up, <laughs> came off just prepping. So I've already got those cut, but I'm going to go ahead and get the um, bell pepper cut up as well as the sweet potatoes. So um, I hope you can see this okay. I know I've got this giant apparatus in front of me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to move my um, electric skillet and then just sort of get some of my ingredients prepped. And you know, normally I would do this on a stove, obviously, but um, if I, you know, if I'm doing a demo in front of people, you don't wanna see me running over to my stove. So I'm just gonna cut the, um, sweet potatoes into small chunks. Lisa, I hate to interrupt you. Is there any way you can yeah. angle the camera down a little bit more? Um, yeah, sure. we, can't, we can't see what you're doing. There we go, that's perfect. Okay, and I'm just gonna click something right here that says got it, where it says it's being recorded because that's kind of blocking my view of what you oh, guys- perfect, well. thank you. Okay, all right, everybody see that all right? Is that a little better? It is, it is better on my end, yes. Okay. So you're gonna cut the sweet potatoes just into some small chunks. And I'm just gonna kind of set these aside on my cutting board. You wanna use um, butternut squash in the recipe. That would be a good substitute for the sweet potatoes if you don't have them on hand. Uh, but the beauty of sweet potatoes and squash really this time of year is that they're in season. 
and uh, they're going to be, you know, pretty inexpensive to use. I'm going to go ahead and swap out that little top right there. And Lisa, we, had a, we had a question. I'm sorry. Are the sweet yeah, potatoes right peeled or are you cutting them on? Yes. With, okay, thank you. Yeah, so I, I peeled these ahead of time. Um, you can certainly leave some of the skin on, but I don't think it would add much to the stew. I think the texture might be a little bit too rough. And then there are, you know, there are some chemicals in the peel of the sweet potato that you don't really want. So a lot of the pesticides are in there. So I just kind of peel the sweet potatoes first. So sweet potatoes, carrots, butternut squash, um, acorn squash, these are all really good source of beta carotene, which is an antioxidant that helps to protect your cells. Um, sweet potatoes are also a good source of potassium, so they help to lower blood pressure. So I've got one uh, potato cut, these are a little rough. Anytime you're cutting either potatoes or onions or peppers, you always want the flat side down just so the, you know, the food's not rolling all over the place, uh, making it more difficult to handle. So I'm just gonna kind of keep cutting this into more manageable little pieces that are, you know, flat so that I'm not, you know, endangering my poor hands. <laughs> And then potatoes are also a good source of vitamin C, which is, you know, another antioxidant that helps to prevent cancer. And to me, this is always sort of my philosophy with food is, and nutrition is to try to get your nutrients from food when you can, instead of taking supplements. And I know this time of year, you know, especially with um, cold and flu season, and, you know, now we're dealing with COVID, um, you know, people are taking more supplements. And that, you know, may protect you, but um, what really helps to protect you is to have a healthy gut microbiome. Um, and when we say that, when we say the gut, and I'm not talking about like your stomach or your pancreas or your gallbladder, what we're really talking about is that bacteria that's in your large bowel. So your large intestine is where your gut microbiome is. So the foods that really help that and help to protect your immune system are things that are high in fiber. So one of the beauties of eating more plant-based foods is you get a, a wide variety of fiber in your diet, which helps to create a, a very diverse microbiome. So um, really your immune system thrives on that bacteria. So you want it to be healthy. Um, I'm not really someone that um, is in favor of elimination diets or fad diets, unless you have a you know, medical condition that you need to do that. Um, you know, something like celiac disease where you, you know, avoid gluten or, um, you know, maybe you're lactose intolerant or, you know, you have a thyroid condition and you can't have soy based products or, or dairy or those sorts of things. But for the most part, um, I think it's really important for people to eat a wide variety of food from all the different food groups so that they, you know, don't suffer deficiencies or, you know, malnutrition. So Lisa, along those lines, somebody asked yes. about your opinion on drinking coffee. Oh, I love coffee. So there are, <laughs> there's several health benefits to coffee. One is that it helps to reduce the risk for diabetes, which is important because the rate of diabetes is going up in the country. The other thing is it helps to reduce the risk for Parkinson's disease, um, as well as liver disease. So there are definitely some health benefits to coffee because it's got a lot of different antioxidants in it. Um, polyphenols, which are found in red wine and the skins of red grapes, and then also caffeic acid, which is found in tea, particularly green tea and black tea. So any of those morning beverages are really pretty healthy. They're, they're high in antioxidants. I would just caution people not to drink a lot of that, you know, in the afternoon, particularly after you know, one or 2 p.m. because it, it does, you know, increase your chance for insomnia. Um, you know, then it also depends on what you put in your coffee. So, you know, drinking it black is great or having a little skim milk or, you know, a small amount of half and half is okay. But once we start making it into this, you know, pumpkin spice latte with lots of syrup and whipped cream and everything, then, then it really becomes dessert. Um, and that's okay now and then, but you just don't want to, you know, make a habit of <laughs> of a lot of pumpkin spice lattes every single day, you know, um, 
that's that's where we kind of get into trouble as far as you know the calories and the sugar and the fat content of, of what you're drinking. Um, so I've got a nice little orange pepper here. And actually I had some yellow peppers, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. If you have a red pepper, that's okay. Uh, red, yellow, orange pepper. I'm gonna save the cap because I wanna use all the rest of the pepper here um, instead of you know just tossing this because there's a lot of you know pepper flesh here that's good. So we're gonna set that aside for a minute. And um, I cut my peppers kind of funny. So usually I just sort of make a, make a slit and try to open them up a little bit. And then I'm gonna cut that. And then I just wanna take sort of this, you know, the um, seeds and whatnot out. So just gonna peel those. Just gonna throw this away real quick. And with your peppers, it's much easier to cut them from this side than the shiny side. So what I like to do is just initially just cut them into strips and then I'll dice them, just making them into smaller pieces. And your more colorful peppers tend to be sweeter. So, uh, you know, red peppers, yellow peppers, red, yellow, orange, those all tend to be much sweeter than your green peppers and they're gonna be a little bit higher in vitamin C as well. So they're a little bit more nutritious. I'm just gonna lop off that little piece right there. And again, good source of vitamin C. Also fiber, which is again, healthy for your gut long-term. I would use whatever color pepper you have on hand. I'm gonna add some color to your dish. And that makes it more appetizing. That actually helps to start the digestion process. So if your food, you know, looks enticing, your mouth starts to water and that produces enzymes that help to start to digest starch. So salivary amylase helps to digest starch. Then you've got all these good enzymes that come from your pancreas to help digest lipids and proteins and everything. So make your food colorful. It makes it more interesting. It makes it more appetizing. And, you know, from a nutritional standpoint, the more colorful it is, um, you know, the more nutrients it'll have. So go ahead and get these peppers cut. And I'm just kind of grouping them with the sweet potatoes because they're all going to kind of go in at the same time because the potatoes take a little time to cook. Okay, now your recipe says to, um, oh, and I also have a little serrano pepper, but this time I used a jalapeno pepper. Serrano peppers are pretty, um, pretty spicy, so I wanted something a little bit milder. Um, so you could use a different type of pepper if you want. A little tricky to cut. What I started to say was that the recipe suggests to saute the garlic with the onions and peppers. Typically, I put that in a little bit later just because garlic tends to brown very quickly and I don't want to change the flavor of it. So I'm going to put the garlic in a little bit later in the recipe and just ignore that recommendation to put it in there with the with the onions and the peppers. Okay, so I've got my jalapeno pepper cut, but again, you could use a serrano pepper, which is in your recipe. Those are a little harder to find sometimes in the store as well. So I've got those. And then I'm just gonna finish cutting my, um, the rest of my bell pepper so that I use all of this. And I'm a real stickler for food waste. So I want to use as much, you know, as much of whatever fruit or vegetable that I'm cooking. Okay. Before I get that all cut, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my little um, electric skillet, which has really come in handy. I tend to use the an electric skillet if I have a food demo that's you know, at a, a company that doesn't have a kitchen. So I've brought that to, I don't know, 
law firms, rec centers, um, just about anywhere that had a, a plug um, and a sink. So, you know, you just kind of make do with, with what you can sometimes. Okay, got that cut. Now, before I cook the onions and um, peppers and the sweet potatoes, I just want to make sure my surface is hot before I um, add the oil. And then we'll let the oil heat for a little bit before I add everything in there. Well, it's starting to get a little bit hot. Now, if you don't have canola oil on hand, you can use another neutral oil. So you could use either corn oil or if you like to cook with soybean oil, that's another one. Um, avocado oil also has um, nice health properties, similar to olive oil, where it's high in monounsaturated fats. It's got a neutral taste. I would say the only negative is that it's expensive. So I tend to use canola oil or corn oil because they're, they're both heart healthy and they have a neutral taste and um, you know, they're, not as, they're not as pricey. That's heating up pretty well. Oh, we've got a cat visitor here. I apologize. I don't know if you heard that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add my onions. Hopefully you can hear a little bit of a sizzle. You could use a white onion or a yellow onion. Or if you don't have either of those on hand, you could certainly use a purple onion and that would add, um, that would add some color to your dish as well as the flavor. Now I'm gonna to try to separate out my sweet potatoes from my peppers. I should have probably put this on a separate um, cutting board, but there's only so much room that I have here. So I'm gonna separate that out a little bit and add the peppers. I should have used a yellow pepper, that way I can see what, what's what. Right now I'm like, oh, everything's orange. Okay, so I've got my serrano peppers and my bell peppers. I'm going to go ahead and add that to my onions. I've got a couple pieces that are not cut. Let's chop real quick. Okay, now it's starting to smell like, now it's like starting to smell like food. I'm going to let the onions and the peppers cook for probably about three minutes or so where the onions start to get sort of clear or translucent. And then the next thing that I'm going to add are my spices. And this is really important anytime that you're making, you know, a soup or a chili or a stew or tomato-based sauce or something like that. Anytime you've got dried herbs, you want to add them in with the oil or whatever liquid that you're cooking with. And what that does is it helps to bloom the spices so the aromatics really come out. If I put these on at the end of the dish, then you can taste them, but they're not going to be, um, they're not going to be as strong of a taste. They're not going to be as rich of a taste. So adding them in with, you know, the vegetables that are cooking helps to kind of coat the vegetables and then it'll give your dish a lot more flavor. Now, when you have um, fresh herbs, you want to add those at the end. So if you've got chopped cilantro or maybe some fresh rosemary or um, basil or something like that, I would add that at the end. It's almost like a little bit of a garnish because if you add it while it's being cooked, it's they're, they're high in water and so they're just going to cook down to like nothing. So you're not really going to get the nice flavor of those um, fresh herbs when you add them, you know, in heat. So I tend to put those on at the end. So these onions are starting to cook down pretty nicely. And again, you can use whatever type of onion that you have on hand. I had some yellow onions, but you could use white onions if you want, or you could use a purple onion if you've got that on hand. Or if you've got some shallots, those are nice. They're a little milder, little kind of purple onion, kind of looks like a you know, cloves of garlic. Okay, 
Now I'm going to add my spices. So I've got a teaspoon of, of my chipotle pepper. And again, you can find this just in Kroger or really any, you know, any place that's, that sells spices. I'm going to add some cumin. Cumin is probably one of my favorite um, spices because you can add it to Mexican food. You can add it to um, Indian food. I, I put it in just about every soup that I make because um, it just gives it a nice flavor. It's also really good in chili. Or any kind of black bean dish is, is great with cumin. And it's inexpensive. You can find it like just about anywhere for a dollar. And then I've just got a teaspoon of salt. So not a whole lot of salt, but the salt also draws out some of the fluid in the um, vegetables. So that adds a little bit of moisture to your dish as well as flavor. So we put the salt in there for a little bit of flavor, but it's also there, um, you know, just kind of pull out more of the flavors of the, of the food itself. We've got this coated. Now, before I add the um, black beans and the tomatoes, just going to talk a little bit about um, the nutritional benefits of these. So, um, you know, black beans are like any other legume. They are a good source of soluble fiber that helps manage blood sugar. It also helps with lowering cholesterol. So we find soluble fiber in oatmeal, barley, um, the flesh of fruits, and then any kind of beans or lentils. So these are great, um, great for also laxation, so to keep you regular. And then again, they provide that nice source of fiber to help keep your gut microbiome healthy. And then I've got some diced tomatoes. And you know, a lot of people are sort of anti-can. Um, I mean, I don't eat a whole lot of canned vegetables, but I do tend to keep some canned tomatoes on hand. Um, they're simple, they're inexpensive, and they're a good source of lycopene, which helps to reduce the risk for prostate cancer as well as ovarian cancer. And then they're also high in um, vitamin C and they're a good source of potassium. So I'm going to add the tomatoes before I add the beans, just because this will add a little bit more liquid to my dish. Um, and with the tomatoes, you don't want to drain them. You actually want that liquid in there to give, you know, your, your stew some, like a, like a broth. We'll go ahead and add those in. And then we've got our black beans. And then I'm gonna add my sweet potatoes. We got one sort of stuck there. And I'm gonna just go ahead and stir this up. Now this is gonna take a little while to cook because you know the sweet potatoes have what's called resistant starch. And that's a type of starch that's a little bit difficult to break down. So you want the, um, you know, the liquid from the tomatoes to kind of soak in and help to soften up those sweet potatoes. And we'll get that going. This, if you're making this at home, maybe Sarah, you can ask the group if anybody's making this at home. Anybody cooking along with me? No Nobody answer. has responded yet. Wow, interesting. Okay. Everybody just might be watching you. Okay, now before I forget, let me get my kind of back out here. I am going to um, cut my garlic and add that in. Now, normally when I'm cooking with fresh garlic, I like to um, I like to let it bloom a little bit. And what that means is just letting it sit at air um, because when it's exposed to air, it helps to bring out or activate a certain chemical called allicin that's in garlic that helps to prevent cancer. We're gonna head and cut this up and then add that in. Okay, I've got my smaller knife here. So I'm just gonna Mince up this garlic, and then we're going to add it into the into the stew. The garlic butt there. We'll throw that out. 
Now you can also use garlic powder if you wanted to. And garlic powder, because it's a very concentrated source of garlic, I would just use about a quarter teaspoon for a clove of garlic. So you don't need to use like an entire teaspoon of garlic powder for one clove of garlic. You just want to use about a quarter of a teaspoon because it is a pretty concentrated form um, of garlic. So Lisa, we did have one person say that they will be making the dish this week. And another Great. one who said they can't cook and listen and watch at the same time. And I totally <laughs> understand that. <laughs> that is really okay. I don't know how I walk and talk at the same time sometimes. So, you know, that's totally fine. All right. So this is, this is simmering nicely. I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic to this. And you can add more garlic if you like. You know, garlic is one of those things. Some people like a lot of it. Some people only want a touch of it. So, um, whatever your whatever your garlic preference preference is, I tend to go a little on the milder side when I'm doing cooking demos because I don't know if people, you know, love it or hate it. I don't want to go too heavy on something. But if I'm making it for myself, I'll probably put more garlic in it. Um, so then what I'm gonna do is just uh, put the lid on this and let this cook down for a little while. But this is, you know, as I mentioned before, a good source of vitamin C, it's a good source of fiber, it's a good source of potassium. It also provides beta carotene. And then we're gonna add some kale at the end, which also adds all of those same nutrients as well as vitamin K, which helps with bone health as well as clotting your blood. So um, lots of great nutrients in kale. It's very nutrient dense food. Lisa, we did have a question about using um, minced garlic and chopped garlic, yeah. fresh garlic interchangeably. Yeah, so you can use, I would say with um, minced garlic, I would probably use about a half a teaspoon um, for like as an equivalent of a clove of garlic, probably about a half a teaspoon. Um, and when, what was the other question? Was it minced garlic and then? Chopped garlic. Oh, chopped garlic. Um, yeah, probably about the same because it's going to be about the same quantity. It's just going to be bigger pieces of garlic. So probably about a half a teaspoon. And then um, somebody else asked if it's okay to use garlic powder if you don't have fresh. Yeah, so I mentioned with garlic powder, because it's more concentrated, I would use about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Um, garlic salt is going to be a combination of garlic powder and garlic salt, in which case then I would just reduce the amount of table salt, you know, table salt that you put in there. Um, but yeah, garlic, garlic powder is a great thing to use because it's simple, it's inexpensive, it doesn't go bad, it's not going to dry up, all those good things. So I'm gonna set this aside. And we'll just put a little timer on. It's probably been cooking about seven minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. Um, put a little timer on it before we add the kale to it. And we'll just turn it down a little bit so it doesn't get too dry. Get all the liquid in there. Okay. So, let me just get, get some things out of the way real quick so I can get things in front of you for the uh, salad. I don't know if it's possible, but we did have somebody ask to see if there if there's any way to see what it looks like currently in the skillet. Do you have the ability? I'll just, I tell you what, I'll bring my computer right over and show you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Let me know if you can see this. Can you see that? So if you can move it a little bit more, there you go. How's that? Wow. It looks delicious. Okay, good. Glad you could see that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's the beauty of the computer. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Technology. Okay, we're just going to turn that down to a little bit of a simmer. And I'm going to set my kale aside. I'm just going to 
gonna run a little water over my um, cutting board so that I don't have all the flavors on it right now. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna put together the salad with spinach and dates and apples. And I just wanna clean surface and make sure that I'm not using a um, <laughs> an onion laden cutting board because there's nothing worse than uh, butting into salad and thinking it's gonna taste like apples and then it tastes like onions. So we don't want that. All right, so let me move a few things over here. Okay. I learned the hard way that with cooking demos, you really need to use clear bowls. That's really important, so everybody can see what I'm what I'm using. So this is one of my one of my favorite salad bowls. I think I picked this up at um, either a yard sale or Goodwill or something, but I just I loved it. It's got this pretty vintage scalloped edge, and um, I'm just a real sucker for vintage kind of cookware and those sorts of things. So, all right. So with um, with this spinach, apple, and date salad, I've got the bag of spinach. Now you can use baby spinach if you like. You could also use arugula, or if you wanted to use the remainder um, of the kale that you had from the sweet potato stew, you could use kale. Um, I would say if you use kale, I would just massage it a little bit. So I've got my Got my kale here. Kale is a pretty rough green. So usually if I use it in a salad, I'm just gonna take it and massage it a little bit, which, which wilts it a little bit, it makes it sweeter. And um, that also just improves the texture of it. But we're not gonna use kale for the salad, we're gonna use the spinach. But you could use kale in a, in a salad if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and place my greens in here. Maybe take out the ones that look a little wilted. Lisa, we did have a question about recommending sure. washing the packaged greens beforehand, or do you just use them as they are? So it depends. If they say that they're they've been prepped and cleaned and they're ready to go, I usually just go ahead and use them. But if they're just right out of the bag, like a bag of romaine lettuce or something like that, or like the hearts of romaine, I usually put them through a salad spinner and and spin them all out. But these have been already kind of prepped and ready to go. If you want to have an extra safety measure, it, it certainly can't, you know, it, it can't hurt to clean them again. Thank you. That's a good question. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna set aside my greens. And I've got two apples here. And some dates. We'll get those out. And then I've got some pecans that we're gonna cut up. But you could also use walnuts if you wanted to. And then I've got some feta cheese, but you could use blue cheese if you like. My husband doesn't like blue cheese. So if I add blue cheese to the salad, I'm the only one eating the salad, which <laughs> that's no fun. I mean, that's okay. It's, I love the salad, but um, you know, he's gonna want a little bit of salad too, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my dates chopped. And again, even though these look like, you know, a giant raisin, they're considered a fresh fruit. So I just need two dates. And a little nutritional info on dates. They're um, actually higher in potassium by weight than bananas. So they're actually a really good source of, um, you know, decent source of potassium for people with high blood pressure. And then they also contain that soluble fiber that helps with blood sugar management. So even though they're very, very sweet and, you know, they do have some calories in them, obviously, they are really healthy food, you know, to, to include in your diet. I just like to use, you know, a couple of them and add them to oatmeal or I might chop them up and put them in a salad or sometimes I've put them in um, cookies, you know, which is another way to use them. This time of year, we're going to all start baking. So I'm just going to kind of cut this in half. Now, the ones that I have here have already been pitted. So you can buy them either, you know, similar to olives, you can buy them either um, pitted or not pitted, but these are already pitted, so they're a little bit easier to cut up. 
And I'm just gonna kind of cut them into little pieces. So Lisa, we had a question, I'm sorry, real quick, about yeah, sure. uh, Go right the ahead. difference between dates and figs. Oh, so they're just they're just a different fruit. So uh, figs are much seedier. They're also, um, you know, a, a fruit that's native to the Mediterranean. They're often grown in California as well. Um, but they're going to be a lot seedier, and they're probably they're sweet, but they're probably not as sweet as dates. So just different different taste and different texture. I like to kind of break these up a little bit because they are pretty sticky. So after I cut them, you know, I just kind of break them up a little bit so that they're um, a little bit more separate in your salad. You could find dates um, at Kroger. You could find them at Aldi. Um, there's a lovely little Mediterranean store in Finley Market called Dean's Mediterranean that also carries really nice. Um, Mediterranean foods, including spices and olives and nuts and seeds and dates and those sorts of things. So you can find them just about anywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my dates to the salad. Just kind of separate them out a little bit. And maybe Sarah, you can ask the audience how many people eat dates or have tried dates. They're kind of an unusual fruit. Um, I always remember them at, at holiday time. My dad used to buy these um, dates that were rolled in coconut and then they had like an almond in the middle and they were, they were like dessert. I mean, they were really good. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever tried those before. I know I have honestly never had one before, so I'm very interested. Interesting. All right, so I'm gonna get my apples cut here. And again, I'm gonna turn it flat. So it's easier to cut. And you just wanna cut them into like little half inch pieces, you know, just little chunks of apples. So we did have someone say that they like them and will eat them sometimes as a snack. Yeah. And then we have another person who's very similar to me who has never had one before, not huh. eating them, but uh, want to try to start. Interesting. Well, maybe when I, I have a demo coming up, I believe in January, and I usually do like a soup and a salad. So maybe I'll do something similar with dates again. So if somebody comes in person for that one, um, they can try them, you know? That is a great way to do stuff. When I was an intern, I had never had quinoa before and oh, right. he, um, he had a chef come in and do a dish with quinoa. And now we eat it regularly at my house, oh, nice. but it's always a great way to get ex experience with things without having to buy them on your own first to see if you like yep. them. Yeah, I totally agree. So I'm just kind of getting the rough edges off of this apple here. And I tend to keep the skin on the apple anytime I use it, especially if I'm just going to use it raw. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of times in a pie, you'll take the skin off and whatnot. But for a salad, I tend to keep the skin on because it gives it some texture, and then it also, um, you know, we keep the fiber in the apple. So, and the color, you know, because if I just cut up the apples by themselves, they're kind of boring. You know, they're just kind of pale. So I like to keep the the skin on the apple anytime I use them in a salad. And we'll cut that in half. Again, you can use, um, like I think Granny Smith apples are really nice in this salad because it gives you sort of that combination of, you know, the sort of tart apple with the really sweet dates. So it's kind of a nice combination because anytime you make a dish, you kind of want to hit all of the different um, taste buds, you know, so the, the vinegar gives you sort of that tangy kind of taste. And then um, the feta cheese will give you a little bit more savory taste. And then you've got sweet and sour between, you know, the vinegar and the, and the apples. So it's kind of nice to use different types of, um, you know, fruits and vegetables in your salad. Was there a question? I thought I saw a question pop up. 
There was, but it was about the video being available later. And I just mentioned that we would be sharing the video on our YouTube channel and Facebook page uh, later on today, as soon as I get an opportunity to watch it and make sure nobody's name or face pops up yeah. um, besides yours or mine. Okay. Well, I think I probably talked about this before, but when you hold a knife, you want to get a good grip on it. So you don't want to really hold it by the handle. I usually tell people hold it with one thumb and then you point your finger and obviously don't get your hand under the blade, but just to hold it like this so you have a little bit more control over it. Um, and we did have another question about what kind of cookies you put dates in. Oh, I mean, I would add them to like an oatmeal cookie or you can add them to a chocolate chip cookie. Um, because they, they just, they go really well with oatmeal, I think. And then I'll use like either cinnamon or I'll use ginger or I'll use pumpkin pie spice as my, you know, as my seasoning. And they're pretty tasty that way. Or, um, you know, with just traditional chocolate chip cookies or oatmeal raisin cookies that you might make, they're, they're a nice substitute for raisins. Great. Thank you. And then do you know if feta cheese is tolerated by someone with a lactose intolerance? really good question. So cheese in general is fairly low in lactose. So there's not a lot of milk sugar in cheese itself. So people that have lactose intolerance don't, their, their body doesn't produce enough of or any of the enzyme called lactase that helps to break down the sugar. So there's not a whole lot of sugar in cheese. So you could probably eat feta cheese if you have lactose intolerance. Probably be pretty safe. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting our apples cut here and just kind of adding them to the salad. So you could use a Fuji apple, you could use Gala, you could use Honeycrisp, you could use really almost any apple in a salad is great. Or if you want to use pears, uh, pears are nice too. I think the only thing with pears is that they're a little bit sensitive, so you have to make sure they're they're right at that sweet spot of being ripe and not too ripe where they're really soggy or, um, you know, some people like to eat them when they're a little bit more firm. So it really just depends on your preference. We did have another question about are dates healthier than raisins? So that's a good question. So they are higher in potassium than raisins for one. Um, they have a little bit more dietary fiber per serving. So, you know, but if you like raisins, I'm not going to say don't eat raisins. Um, it's really, a, a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a preference. So if you, you know, if you like them better, um, they're a little bit more expensive, um, but they are, you know, they are pretty nutritious and, you know, the size of them, you're only going to eat probably one or two, you know, which would be about the equivalent of like two tablespoons of raisins. It's a good question. All right, so we've got our apples in here. And I'm just gonna start to just kind of toss this a little bit. So you can kind of see what's going on with our salad. Can everybody see this okay? So we've got right now the, oh, I lost a little. My cat will come and eat that later. Um, so. I, I've got my spinach and my apples and my dates in here, and then I'm just gonna set this inside and chop up some pecans. About two thirds of a cup. Now this one went through the dishwasher in a, in a bad way. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little, a little wonky. Um, so I have, a little device here called a Mesaluna. And what this is, is just a, a, a really easy way to cut up either nuts or herbs. It's got like a little blade that rocks back and forth. Um, for me, a person with arthritis, this is really nice because I don't have to hold a big knife and I have some control over it. Um, but basically I just take this and kind of rock it back and forth and um, you know, chop the nuts with it. Now, if you have somebody with a nut allergy, you could use either pumpkin seeds or you could use sesame, not sesame seeds, um, 
sunflower seeds. I was going to say sesame seeds are going to be kind of tiny, but you could use some sort of um, seed instead of the nuts if you wanted to. Or you can completely leave the nuts out and that's fine too. Um, I think they add just, you know, kind of a nice texture to the salad and then they add some taste and then um, a little bit of crunch. So I like to put nuts in salad usually. Now, if I'm going somewhere, I won't put them in um, unless I know the crowd really well, that, that there isn't anybody with a nut allergy or if I'm doing a food demo, I'll just sort of ask somebody ahead of time, you know, is there anybody here that has an allergy? There's our, okay, there's our timer on the stew. And I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add the kale to this. And then we'll get back to our salad real quick. I'm just gonna rip the kale a little bit to make the pieces a little bit smaller. And one thing you can do before you put the kale in, now this, this kale doesn't have a lot of stems, but if you can see like the little stem of the kale, so that's not, that's not very tasty to, to eat unless it's chopped up really fine. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll take some of the stems of kale and chop those up along with the onions and the peppers and put those in ahead of time, just because they'll kind of cook down like celery. And that way I'm not, um, you know, wasting the stems and I'm, I'm you know, giving the dish a little bit more texture. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, kale into the stew <clears throat> and then turn it up a little bit so that the kale cooks down a little bit. And Lisa, we did have a question about the cutting device that you used. What is yeah. that called again? So that's called a Meza Luna, which stands for half moon. So I think it's regarding the, you know, sort of the half, half moon of the, um, of the blade. And I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the computer over here so you can take a look at the the stew. This is looking pretty good, and the sweet potatoes are starting to soften. Now the good thing is this is gonna look a little bit on the dry side, but because the kale is pretty high in water, once it starts to break down, it's gonna add more liquid to the stew. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the computer over here so you can kind of take a look at what this looks like now. So, let me see. Uh, can you see that? We can. So that's what our stew is gonna look like when it's done. And it, sm it smells really good. Um, so again, the benefits, this is all plant-based, so completely vegan. Um, it's pretty hearty though, because a lot of times with vegan food, um, you, you feel like you might be a little hungrier because you don't have that, you know, meat base or something. But because this has got a lot of beans in it and the sweet potatoes and the kale, it makes it really nice and hearty. I'm just going to stir this up a little bit more and then put the lid back on and just let it simmer for a while. And again, what I like about this is it's really, really colorful. So, you know, it's orange and red and green. And, black and if I had yellow peppers in there it would have some nice yellow tones in it as well but it's just a really pretty stew for this time of year. Okay. Okay, put our lid back on. I'm gonna go ahead and come back to our salad. Oops. My recipe stuck to my bottom here. Okay. So we've got We've got the chopped pecans that I'm going to go ahead and add in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and make up my dressing and then add the cheese, or I could add the cheese now, either way. Let's see where I've got my cheese. See this is opened up. Oh, not open, so I'm going to open up the cheese here. Nice. And um, if you're concerned about the fat in the cheese, they do make a, a low fat version of feta cheese. So um, that's all, you know, that's a possibility or an option. Okay. 
need about two tablespoons, which is roughly a quarter cup. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this in. And the nice thing about either feta cheese or blue cheese, because it's pretty strong, you don't really need a whole lot of it in your recipe. Um, just to give your salad a little bit of taste. So you don't you have you don't have to add gobs and gobs of um, of cheese to your salad to still get that nice taste to it. And this is looking like really it's looking really pretty. Okay, we so set this aside and go ahead and do our dressing. And what I've got for the dressing is some balsamic vinegar. And canola oil, again, really simple. Got a little bit of honey, and this is actually from, this is from another dietitian friend named uh, Cynthia Bloxham, who has um, beehives in New York, who goes and harvests honey a couple times a year. And so every now and then I'll get this lovely jar of honey. So I've got some uh, New York honey there. I've got my balsamic vinegar already kind of measured out and my oil ready to go. And then the other thing that's gonna give your salad, um, your salad dressing a little bit of, of flavor as well as texture is just some Dijon mustard. You can also use just plain yellow mustard, that's fine. Um, or if you really wanted to change it up, you could put a little bit of ginger paste in. I think that would be, um, that would be tasty too. It would give it a little bit more texture and it would also just change the flavor a little bit. So I've got my vinegar. And if you don't have balsamic vinegar, you could use apple cider vinegar or you could use red wine vinegar. Either of those would work fine. Um, I kind of like balsamic vinegar because it's a little bit richer texture and a little, you know, a little heartier flavor. Another good option would be um, orange juice or lemon juice. Those also make really nice marinades or dressings. And I've got my oil in there. And I need a teaspoon of honey. So we're gonna go ahead and get that out. Make sure I've got the right one, yep. That just adds a little bit of sweetness to uh, the dressing. You could probably leave it out, but I kind of like it in there just because it kind of cuts the tartness of the vinegar a little bit. And then we need a tablespoon of mustard. I'm gonna use a little bit less on the mustard. I'm trying to find my other cooking utensil as well. We'll just go ahead and use it, okay. I'm gonna use a smaller amount of mustard, primarily because I'm running out of mustard <laughs> and I don't want it too strong. I'm just gonna use about a half a tablespoon if I can get that out. Let's see. My mustard's not cooperating. And again, you could use plain yellow mustard for this. If you'd like, Dijon mustard just has a little bit of uh, white wine in it, a little, a little less tart. Put that in. Okay. And now I'm just going to whisk this up. And I have a smaller whisk, but I don't know what happened to it. Okay. Now this doesn't look like, it doesn't look like a lot of dressing, um, but it's actually um, plenty for the salad. So it's about measurement wise, about a third of a cup of dressing, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you really don't want your salad to be drowning in dressing. You really just want to lightly dress it so that you can taste all of the different fruits and vegetables that are in there. Um, but again, the nice thing about the balsamic vinegar is it's a little bit richer and it really just kind of brings out the taste of, you know, the apples and the dates and the spinach together. So it's really kind of a nice, 
um, a nice touch. And I'm gonna go ahead and toss this and then we've got our salad. And obviously you wouldn't, you wouldn't dress it until right before you serve it. So this is my lunch <laughs> um, and my husband's lunch, part of his lunch. Now with, um, with different types of greens, if you were using kale for the salad, you could dress it ahead of time because that'll help to kind of wilt the, um, the lettuce or, or rather the greens. <clears throat> but with like a spinach salad or if you were using arugula or another type of leafy green, I would probably hold off dressing it until right before you serve it, just like you would any other salad. Lisa, how long in advance can, can you make the uh, dressing and have it still stay good? Oh, you could make it a, easily like a week or so ahead of time. I mean, dressing, dressing stays pretty, I mean, there's not a whole lot in it to make it contaminated. So it'll, it'll keep for a while. I mean, it'll probably keep for like two weeks. And any other, any other questions? I have not had any other ones come through that we didn't address. Okay. I mean, um, one thing I could talk about real quick is just um, something really basic on food storage. Um, so a lot of times people will put, you know, their citrus fruit or their apples on the counter, which is great because, you know, you see it, you're more likely to eat it. Um, but if you're somebody that eats fruits and vegetables pretty regularly and you know you're going to go ahead and eat it, I would keep it in a Ziploc bag in your refrigerator because it's going to keep a lot longer. Um, I do this with um, lemons, limes, any kind of citrus fruit that I buy. I just store it in a big gallon size Ziploc bag or you could put it in a you know plastic container or something that's airtight. But that's going to keep it from the moisture that's in your house um, and it's going to keep it from wrinkling and, and drying up really quickly. So it's just a, you know, an, an easier way to kind of make your produce last a little bit longer. Same thing with peppers. Um, peppers are better stored in the refrigerator. Obviously, tomatoes we store on our, on our counter for them to get ripe. But, you know, once they're ripe, it's okay to put them in the refrigerator until you use them. We did have a question about the salad dressing. If you do make it in advance, does it need to be kept in the refrigerator? I would say yes. I would keep it in the refrigerator once it's all mixed. Perfect. Just for, just for a safety you know, kind of safety standards. And then someone else commented that they really love your cooking demonstrations. Aw, thank you. That's very nice. Did anybody else have any questions for Lisa? Ooh, do you want to see the stew one last time? That would be great if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. And then stir it up a little bit. This probably makes about, I think I had on the on the recipe about six to eight servings, about one, about one cup of, you know, one cup each with all the ingredients in there. Um, can you see that okay? Yeah, wow, it does look really good. So there's that. You can also add a little water to it, or if you wanted to add a little vegetable broth to it, just to give it a little, a little more liquid, you could, or tomato juice even. And then um, here's our spinach salad. So. Well, you guys will be eating good tonight. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. Well, well, two of us will, because my daughter won't eat this, but that's okay. <laughs> Awesome. Any other, like any other questions or anything? Um, somebody asked what you would do differently to cut the stew recipe in half. Oh, um, so you'd have to use really just half as many ingredients. So I, I would say, you know, if you have a, a can of black beans, I would use half of a can, or if you can find like just an eight ounce can of black beans. Um, you could also just use like a fresh tomato and just dice it yourself and just use one tomato instead of the whole can. And then with the sweet potatoes, I actually used two small sweet potatoes. So you could use like one small sweet potato and, and then cut all the rest of the ingredients in half. So, you know, half a teaspoon of the spices, half of an onion, um, one potato instead of two, and then just reduce the amount of beans. And then that would, you know, that would cut it in half. But yeah, it's, it looks, you know, it looks, it's all cooked through, <laughs> so that's good. 
Um, and the sweet potatoes have softened up, so it's pretty much ready to go. I mean, you're, you're going to spend some time with prep, but, you know, I made this within an hour. So, you know, you can have dinner on the table within an hour, probably a little sooner because, you know, might not be working on a salad at the same time. Awesome. Any other, any other questions? Somebody did comment that it does look very good. So. Well, good. Yeah. And I, I have some recipes on my website. It's just uh, soundbitesnutrition.com. And you'll see my goofy face there. And I'm probably wearing a t-shirt of some sort. So um, I do love that t-shirt, by the way, okay. that you came on today. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, this um, is kind of a, uh, you know, Halloween special. <laughs> <laughs> So definitely want to thank um, everybody for coming today and thank you so much uh, Lisa for being our presenter today. Um, if anybody has any questions about cancer support community you can call our main number at 513-791-4060 for more information and just to let everybody know we do have another it's been a weekend of cooking demos. Um, we have our Sunday family dinner tomorrow night with uh, Clint from Slats Pub um, so if you guys want to hang out tomorrow too definitely uh, the information is on our website to register. But Lisa, as always, thank you so much. It was a very wonderful presentation and we enjoyed having you guys um, all with us today. So I hope you guys all enjoy your weekend. Um, and um, if anybody is missing the recipes, you can definitely reach out to us on Monday and we will be able to get those to you. And then, like I said, this will be posted on our Facebook and um, our YouTube channel, hopefully later on today. So Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a great holiday next week. Thank you, Lisa. You too. Sure. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. Bye.